All right, y'all, this is the next day. Uh, the intakes, um, yesterday, so the last time I recorded, I can't remember what I finished with. I got the intake torqued down. Yesterday, I wasn't able to get a whole lot done. I installed the throttle, throttle cables, um, and a couple other little doodads. This uh, ground strap down here to the head. Um, got these hoses kind of cinched down a little bit because they're kind of loose. And I was able to pick up a section of hose for the uh, oil soaked one. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is get the thermostat and everything hooked back up. I did get some, uh, some hose clamps to do that. Next, I will uh, get the uh, new spark plugs installed. I got a little bit of dielectric grease for that. Um, after that, I think we're going to focus on getting the, uh, basically everything else situated uh, on the intake. Um, I might go ahead and do the fuel filter at that point and then get everything hooked up, which is exactly what I'll do. And then we'll bolt up the uh, power steering pump Alt, uh, AC and alternator, get all those bolted up, and then hook up our belts. Um, after that, we will install our reinstall our radiator assembly, get the uh, trans cooler lines hooked up, and after that, I think we'll go ahead and get our battery hooked up as well as well as our um, washer fluid reservoir, and then. I think before I do the transmission, I'll probably start it, make sure it actually starts and runs. Of course, I need to put oil in it. And then once I know it starts and runs, I will go ahead and uh, drop the transmission pan, change out the mesh filter, change out the spin-on filter, fix the leak. That's mainly why I'm doing all that. And um, <clears throat> again, we're going to do like a little mini oil flush. Run that up for a little bit, at least while we're test driving it, and then come in and change the oil. And then um, we got our, we're gonna go with this Xerox Asian vehicle. Um, it did say, from what I was finding, that if you have a 2001 and you've upgraded the head gaskets, you can use um, normal green coolant, but that normal green coolant needs to be changed every 30,000 miles. So what I went ahead and got was this, the only way they, way they sold it was 50-50. One good thing about that, besides the fact you're having to buy the water. Uh, now, of course, I'm trusting Xerox that they're actually using distilled water. But um, you're supposed to use distilled water when mixing with coolant. And the reason is why is that all the minerals that are in normal water will start to attach themselves to inside your coolant system. And then, of course, wreak havoc. And the other thing in there that would react to, you know, different metals, etc. So anyway, so we're pretty much cruising at this point, guys. Forgive me for not filming as much, going back together. Um, I need to get a tripod and just a decent way to film without it taking up all my time. Again, this is something I'm doing on the side and just trying to get her done. If you have any questions at all on this project, please let me know. I could probably help you out. Uh, I don't do the best at getting all the information out there. I really don't try and do exact how-to videos just because I'm leaving so much out. But I'm actually doing the job, and so if you have any questions about anything at all, let me know. And of course, I got the uh, full pack torqued. Not torqued, there we go, get that plugged in. We'll get these wires plugged in. And get her done, guys. All righty, let's rock and roll. Talk to y'all soon. All right, y'all, we got the thermostat installed. Um, put a little bit of silicone grease. It's a, just a very, very thin layer around the rubber seal just to make sure it all goes in to the little uh, area okay, and it just adds that extra little bit of protection. We went ahead and left this one stock. Didn't carry it, and um, it's looking really good. We replaced this one. Um, sorry for the lack of a good view here um, and then this one over here we I, I found a stock piece of hose and installed uh, some brand new 
hose clamps. Hoping that my belt. One thing you gotta watch out for doing hose clamps on the front of the engine area is make sure that the uh, this thing or the tab isn't interfering with a belt that may be whispering past. So um, I just threw this bolt. There's two. There's two 10 millimeter bolts. This one and there's one back there. It's not necessary. Um, yeah, I think the main reason they have two is that this one could end up loosening at some point. I'll probably pull that out and put some Loctite in it, but this one back here is such a pain in the butt to get on. I, I get it, I got it off there once I had the heads completely loose, and I could probably actually do it, no problem, but uh, there is one more 10 millimeter bolt back there, depending on what you guys, what you want to do on yours, but there's that. Ugh. I got the oil dripping, um, getting all that last bit of brake clean out. And here we are up here. Um, we've got the power steering pump bracket installed. There's a uh, 12 mil back there. 12 mil um, without me dropping everything right there. And then also a 12 mil right here. And this is the one that had Loctite on it uh, coming out. So I put a little bit of blue Loctite on there going in. Got it all nice and tight. The uh, AC compressor kind of fits in after this gets installed. Um, this piece installs onto that. These other pieces I'm going to have to kind of figure out because I forgot, but uh, it'll all become apparent. And then we'll finish off with the alternator and then of course our dwindling parts. Um, put our belts on. I'll probably leave the belt guards off and then the next what we'll do is install the radiator I have it kind of dripping there was a teeny bit of oil residue on the very uh, the inlet of the uh, radiator itself so I really probably clean that as much as I can I'm wondering if I should add a little bit of water hmm the only part that hasn't really gotten flushed at all is inside the block any the passages and then, then of course the heater core and all that uh, meaning that if there's any oil residue left over but we did do the initial flush so I'm pretty confident that we're good but guys I'm so pumped up get this thing done get this thing out of my garage so I can get the plow truck pulled back in we've got all of our machinery hanging out and uh, here's our uh, basically garbage slash extra parts and uh, I have a hard time throwing good parts away so I'll definitely probably keep the good ones and end up having a part supply for the apocalypse one day <laughs> but anyways guys we're gonna get this thing put back together over and out I'll try to do a picture All right, y'all, we are nearing the end. So what I've got done here is I've mocked up everything. Um, the alternator, of course, the, uh, so, so, so first off, the main bracket here is, is bolted down. There's a bolt uh, there, and then there's a couple more up front there. Um, one of them has uh, Loctite on it, so just remember that. Um, this went in there okay. So this back bushing here, when you tighten it up, that bushing sinks in. That's what makes these things difficult to remove. So when you're going back in, now it's questionable if you rat-a-tat-tat -tat on that bushing, it's a possibility you could damage something in here. Now I would just say that to cover all bases. I went ahead and tap, tap, tap a root that bushing and I have plenty of wiggle room to get this thing in and out. If you saw the first, uh, in fact, I didn't film it because it took forever because it got it actually got wedged in this way, or or was it this way? It got wedged this way, and I couldn't get it out. And uh, of course, I don't want to damage it. So these are finger tight. I actually didn't even need to remove this uh, this tensioner. Of course, uh, the power steering, this bolt runs through into the alternator that will ultimately be our adjustment. 
And then this will be, of course, the adjustment first on the AC belt. So down here, you have to mock up this thing first. Um, you gotta basically run the bolts through the compressor and then bring this thing down. I've, I've got all the bolts started. This one's started. This one and this one is started. And then um, I got my tools ready to go here, my 14 and 12s. Um, you'll, you'll need this set up here, extension and a nice shallow 14 for this back one. That's probably the toughest. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to suck that thing down. We're going to install, we're going to run this. Oh, I can do that right now. Run this bolt down. Make sure everything's kosher. Install our AC belt. Install our alternator belt. And then uh, one thing I wanted to point out was the uh, fuel lines have to be take um, put on sort of last almost because the AC line has to go down below. I didn't know that I already had all these installed as you can see in my slick night tie to uh, make sure that there was a complete seal on my, whatever that is, I guess it's probably a breather. I don't know what that is. Oh, probably evap, evaporative purge line or something. I don't know. So we're going to run this thing down, guys. And then, of course, we'll be doing our battery. Well, not that yet. After we get our belts, we're going to install our radiator. And then, of course, uh, battery, washer fluid, tank. And then I want to do a test start before we get too far. And just make sure everything's running. Because if it doesn't, guess what? I'll be tearing back into it really suck I've covered my bases pretty well so I don't I don't suspect that will happen but and you can see our continued dwindling of parts so let's keep her going 2001 Subaru Forester 2.5 all right y'all I got the covers on I did make one mistake um, this cover needs to go on before this bolt gets tightened up. And of course you get the uh, 10 mil that runs down, just a belt guard. Um, I had to get a longer 10 mil for this one because the original bolt was so stripped, but this is also something that kind of bolts up. Um, other than that, guys, I'm letting everything kind of drip dry. My next big thing is to really clean the radiator I'm gonna to try to flush it out obviously I'm gonna seal up the transmission uh, fluid cooler side of things with that other nipple there we're gonna close that up probably run some water through the whole radiator just make sure there's no no junk through there I don't want to have to reflush this system because the coolant that I have is is 50 50 mix and so um, if let's say I've got uh, maybe there's two cups of water in the uh, heater core um, put it all the 50 50 in there and it dilutes it down to negative 30 or negative 25 I think we're gonna be good um, reason why I went with this coolant so the issue is guys with the Subarus because the lower half of the head gaskets are sitting in coolant. If you use the green, you gotta change it every 30, okay? If you don't change it every 30, you gotta get some higher quality coolant. And if you mix your own coolant, use distilled water. So that is kind of the official say so. The minerals in water that's not distilled um, can really wreak havoc on the inside of an engine. And if you change your coolant every 30 to 50,000 miles, you're not gonna have to deal with it because you're, you're gonna be staying on top of it big time. So anyways, we got our, um, whoop, this light is starting to get, uh, huh. kinda weird. There you have it, guys. You can see the lower uh, hose there. Radiator battery, washer fluid, tank, 
coolant tank, start, um, trans service, coolant and engine oil, uh, you know, perfection or whatever. Here's our new hoses. All right, guys, I'm turning in for tonight. Oh my goodness. It's like 12.45 a.m. It's almost one o'clock. I'm just trying to get this thing done, skis, y'all. Hell freaking yeah. Subaru, baby. That's how, we, that's how we do it. We're back at it on the Subaru. Um, Basically, I'm cleaning up the radiator to install that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though is I realize this thing does not have a block heater. Uh, it does get pretty cold up here in Alaska, so I highly recommend you have one. Just obviously helps your vehicle warm up faster, but it, uh, it's a whole lot nicer for the engine. So let's go under here and just make sure that it doesn't have one. So yeah, there's the plug right there that it's supposed to uh, go into. Um, so it's looking good there. Um, yeah, there's that outside. It's just the heater. See so the other side of the plug there. I don't know if you can see it where this hose goes up. Um, there you go. You can kind of see that behind there. Um, that's the other side, and it's has that going on. So I'm just gonna get my trusty 14 millimeter Allen wrench that I used for the front uh, plugs and um, get that sucker loose and um, pretty sure that's the one so I'll probably double check um, that looks pretty big so I don't know guys it may be one of these two I will uh, double check here and figure it out. So, all right, y'all, we are finally back together. I don't have the air box on yet. The uh, upper hose they gave me was too short. Kind of a crappy it's gates part, but it's pretty crappy and uh, too small. Um, got the battery hooked up, coolant reservoir, washer tank. I got some conventional oil in there to do kind of a last flush. Um, thinking I probably should not have that. That's fine. I was thinking that maybe I shouldn't have the old filter on there, but it's fine, guys. Eh. Yeah, I'm still gonna start it to see if it runs. I was thinking with the old, it's the old filter, not the old old filter, but the one I, I did a quick flush on. So it's not, it's not too bad in there. Anyway. Here's our uh, block heater. Once I'm sure that everything is good to go, I'll route the cord. And we've got our um, cooler lines hooked up, our lower hose. Um, I will get to this transmission after I know the engine actually runs. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Of course, got my trans parts. Let's put these back up here. Sorry guys. All right, now, moment of truth. Let's make sure we're hooked up. Um, everything's plugged in. Ignition. I cleaned the throttle body. Um, got my ground straps. Looking good. I think we're ready to go guys. Let's just say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the Subaru. Help it to serve my nephew well. Help the work I did to it to be good work. Help this thing fire up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Let's take a look here. All right, let's see. There's our key on. Just cycle it a couple times to get some fuel off the rails. Ready? Let's do it. All right. 
Alright, I don't have coolant in it. So, I can tell it runs. Awesome stuff. Let's do a quick look here. Actually needs some motor mounts. Feels like. Huh. Wow! Look at that. See that? Not to look at that. All right, shut her down. All right, we're still a little ticky ticky. Um, I don't know, guys. I adjusted the valves, and uh, it's a little bit noisy, but that's fine. Um, all the lifters need to build pressure. Once I get some coolant in there, I will uh, basically, uh, hopefully that'll go away. Um, I do need to have somebody rev the motor. Thing in these motor mounts feels like um, probably should have thrown some in there but I had no idea they were that bad actually so um, what I'll have to do is have somebody rev it up as I look at it down here and I should be able to replace those pretty simply hopefully um, so we'll cross that bridge when we need to uh, but once the uh, this thing gets driven, and uh, I was gonna say the lifters need to get charged up, but there's no lifters in this thing, so um, I'm not quite sure why it would have valve noise still. That now that I adjusted the valves, but these sometimes will just do that, guys. These are kind of a ticky engine sometimes. It's, it is an older Subaru. I mean, shoot, it's 20 years old. So praise the Lord, it started. We're going to get going in the trans service, and then tomorrow we're going to pick up a longer upper hose. As you can see, this is the original, so I line it up there. Um, basically, just, I could, it might work, but especially with these motor mounts, kind of, kind of wonky. I need one that's extra long. I will talk to Dad about the motor mounts. If I notice, they're, they're kind of terrible. I'll look into what it takes to actually changing them. I should be able to change one at a time, possibly. Um, I should have went ahead and done that, but again, it's you don't know about this stuff until you, until you know more, I guess. So anyways, praise God, things started up. Um, I, like, I, like I said, tonight I will go ahead and um, get the trans service done, and then I will look into the door locks and figure out why they're not working and then i'll call it a night so I'll leave this in here actually since it's running in the battery picked up and have the key with me all right y'all well again it's a little bit ticky ticky we'll see what happens after we get some better oil in it um I think I think the valves probably should have adjusted on the tightest end of the scale. Uh, probably should have I probably should have done that. But when it gives you specs, you know that's a few thousands. I chose right in the middle, and knowing now, I probably should have chose close to uh, minimum spec. But you know it is what it is, guys. This thing will run forever. It's not a big deal. So. All right, guys, well, I am pumped up. This hose probably needs to be replaced, too. It's really, uh, this section right here is a regular, but over here where it's, it's pretty soft. But anyways, guys, that's not a big deal. All right, y'all. Man, I'm pumped up. Um, like I said, I got to get some more parts tomorrow. If I can get the trans installed, I'll, I'll maybe I'll hold off on the air filter assembly. I'm gonna check with dad to see if what's he, what he wants to do with the uh, motor mount 
and um, I'll probably want to do that ASAP before I put anything else. I mean, the only thing left is the air box, so. But if I do jack it up, that'll obviously probably move around a bit. Um, same with the upper hose. I probably need to get that done, but we shall see. And um, let's take it from there, guys. Subaru Forester 2001. I took it all the way apart, put it back together, and it actually runs. Yeehaw. <laughs> all right, Joe.